In September 2016, the first drug for Duchenne muscular dystrophy, ataplasin, also known as Exondis 51, was approved by the FDA through the accelerated approval pathway for about 13% of boys with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Duchenne muscular dystrophy results uh, due to mutations in the DMD gene that render the gene inactive such that it no longer makes the protein dystrophin. This exon dis drug is designed to rescue the expression of dystrophin, a mini dystrophin that's internally truncated but predicted to have significant function. Uh, there's several issues that are now being faced by patients and families with Duchenne muscular dystrophy in the United States. Reading through some of the denial letters, which are often then needing external medical review, it's clear that some of the insurance companies are lacking a clear understanding of the basic science and the evidence from the ADCOM process in the FDA documents that led to the accelerated approval of Exxon Disc 51. Some insurers are pushing the issue of, is this appropriate for only ambulatory patients and not non-ambulatory patients? It's our opinion that it's appropriate for both ambulatory and non-ambulatory patients. Non-ambulatory patients have substantial skeletal muscle function that remains that's very worthwhile to, uh, to retain, or at least slow the progression of the disease process that includes respiratory muscles, muscles using small movements of the hands, or precious to patients with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Boys with DMD grow to be men with DMD, and they should not be forgotten here today in this discussion. There's been much focus and emphasis on walking as an endpoint in DMD, but walking is, an end, is not an endpoint for a young man with DMD. Retaining upper limb strength is important for being able to eat, drive a wheelchair, type on a keyboard, and hold a job. These are the endpoints that matter. Uh, ambulation is one thing that Exondus is maintaining, but he, it's maintaining, I guess, his heart, his lung function, and um, that is that that counts a lot too because that is one thing that's um, that's very important for survival. not about walking, it's about the quality of life. You know, talk about social, emotional, and self-esteem. I think that there is the ability for a child to get past, as awful as that is, the loss of their feet. Um, that's one thing, but you know, why would you take away their ability to feed themselves and their ability to pick up something and their ability to go through the school day and write and work like their other they friends? Use their power chair. I don't know why it would matter whether or not a child is in a wheelchair and can't use their legs or can't. This is a drug that affects every skeletal muscle in the body and social and emotional well-being is just as important for boys who are in wheelchairs as boys who can still walk. Just being able to feed yourself or brush your teeth, those are still important things that you can do in life. And just because you're in a wheelchair doesn't mean that you're lost to this disease. It just means you have to adapt a, diff a different way. And I don't want society to think like, well, if you're in a wheelchair, then you don't deserve it. Because that is absolutely mm -hmm. not true. They still deserve a high quality of life. The consensus is that it would clearly still be worthwhile to administer this drug to boys throughout the disease process. Absolutely. With a clear prediction that it would benefit the boys to some extent. Yeah.